I'm going to tell you about my family and I want to tell you something I haven't shared with many until now. And it's how I have already chosen, just like Dame Esther, that if the situation is such that I'm given a diagnosis of a terminal illness, then I will choose to go abroad and die that way with dignity and not subject myself or my family to the only um, pathway which is available in the UK. Why? Uh, well, I think sometimes it's best to give the detail and not gloss over it. I watched my mum die, as I'm sure many of you listening have watched a loved one die, and I want to hear from you. Mum and I were very close, I mean really really close. I'd grown up very poor with mum as a single parent. My brother and sister are quite a bit older than me. And we had done all sorts together when I was growing up, including once running away to the circus. Yes, that's for another time, but that is what happened. I was her, her baby and she felt a special responsibility for me. And that was the same. That was how I felt about my mum. So mum lived with me from when I was 21 until she died in 2017. We bought a house together in Leeds. She wrote into Countdown to get me the job. She forged my signature on the application form, can you believe? And then uh, when I got to the grand old age of 25, she started working for me and she carried on working for me for decades. Um, she lived with us. She lived with me. She lived with us when I was married all that time. Then she lived with us when I was divorced. She lived with me and my children. And we came as a team of four. She was my, um, sorry, I'm going to get emotional. She was my every day until she wasn't. Um, Mum had three cancers from when she was in her early 70s. She had ovarian cancer and then she had kidney cancer. And then she had a very large melanoma uh, removed from her scalp. Two years after that, and we, we come to 2016, 2017, she was in a lot of pain and she couldn't eat properly. And she'd become very anxious about going out unless it was with me and the kids or with my sister or my brother. Um, now, I remember the Sunday morning when she... We didn't know at the time, but she had cancer everywhere by this point. She was crying with pain and she didn't want to go to the doctor. And I, I said, Mum, I can't do anything more. You know, making you another cup of tea just isn't going to cut it anymore, Mum. I have to get you to hospital. So I took her to the BRI, the Bristol Royal Infirmary, which is our local. And they took their tests and their scans and she was in overnight. And when um, I went back, obviously first thing the next day, uh, the consultant came round and they told her that she had terminal cancer. Um, and she had a choice whether she wanted to receive chemotherapy or radiotherapy or whatever the treatment would be. And she said she didn't. She wanted uh, to leave the treatment uh, not to have the treatment and um, to, to, you know, die without that. And it was very hard as a daughter um, to hear those words. And then, you know, it's not so long ago now, and a week later it was Mother's Day. And uh, by that point, she had morphine and the morphine had helped. And we gave her a wonderful party with all of her children, her grandchildren, and one great-grandchild at that time. She was nana to everyone. She was mum to the three of us. And she lived for a further 10 weeks. Now, as the weeks went on, the morphine started to wear off. The pain was coming back. And so she had more, more morphine to curb the pain, but she was still in pain. The nurses told us, um, you know, uh, that she needed what they described as, um, oh, what did they call it? It was uh, like a, a syringe almost. It was like a, 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 dr a driver, I think they called it, a morphine driver. Uh, she didn't want to go into care, so we looked after her at home. And she died at home, my beautiful mum, with all of us around her bed. But... I will never forget the pain or the moment she took her last breath ever. I can see it now. I can see it in front of me. And I've spoken to my children about it, particularly my son. We live together and I suppose in many ways we have a similar relationship to me and my mum. You know, I, I don't know if she'd been given a choice uh, whether or not she would have taken assisted dying. She was a... Uh, um, Catholic and I don't know whether that would have uh, persuaded her not to do so and that's the point of my story today really 
um, is would she have taken uh, a chance at assisted dying? Um, I know I would. 